Hello, everybody. Today is March 17th, and it is all business all the time today. Just one giant business section. One giant business enchilada. Yep. There's so much stuff. There's one thing. <coughs> Milan, Epic Third Generation, launched this week. We did a separate video on that at the beginning of the week. So check that. But our first video does, our first video, our first story doesn't have anything to do with that. Our first story is about Epic and their battle with Google. And while I would say the front has not advanced, they may have widened the trench. <laughs> They're going for multiple targets. We're going to be covering this for 10 years. This is the Merv of lawsuits. <laughs> Remember the Merv from Scorched Earth? Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Here's a useless piece of trivia. You know what Merv is an acronym for? Uh. Multiple independently targeted reentry vehicles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Nukes. And that's what they're trying to do here. They're trying to drop one on Australia. <laughs> Epic Games has uh, involved Google in their Australian lawsuit. I didn't get the, th the thing exactly right. Thanks, Bloomberg. But uh, yeah, so Epic Games is, is going ahead and including Google in the Australian lawsuit. And really the nugget here is more of the same that we've covered before is that Google makes it too hard to load your applications through anything other than the Google Play Store. Uh, there's a couple of interesting tidbits in, in the the lawsuit here which is that you know on android you can sideload applications it's just that google has basically made it impossible to do that and still the payment wouldn't yeah uh, qualify in that part so yeah it is almost exactly the same lawsuit that they have in the u.s and in the eu so they're just adding more locations and if you lose all of them but one that keeps it going right it really does it's a brilliant if underhanded tactic for the legal system Chris, that What's dog happening? is just losing it. She is losing it. Riru. How's, Riru. What, you, how does she, like, is she enjoying the new house? How's she reacted? She loves the house. She's super excited. She's had no accidents, which I was worried about, but she seems fine. She goes to the door. Uh, now, here's the she million loves the dollar. Yard. Here's the million dollar question, and it involves the yard. Are you now picking up all of her poop? Yes. Oh. Yes. So, renting someone else's property don't pick up poop we only didn't pick it up on our little section if she pooped in someone else's yard she it always got picked up oh well that makes it okay <laughs> yeah well we're and we're gonna pick up what whatever's left out there before we leave we've already started that process so <laughs> how much is there not that much it, it biodegrades yeah. fairly quickly but yeah but it's gonna rain for the next week it's there's gonna be a slurry out there yeah it will be a roo slurry a roo slurry Ugh. yeah that's you, the joys of having a dog and not a cat. I don't have all her poops in one convenient box. You know what is um, probably slightly more unpleasant than Rue Slurry? Comcast. <laughs> it's true. That's a lot more unpleasant. Comcast is scrambling to fix a mistake that cut some customers' upload speeds by 20%. On the uh. one hand, this story is a nothing burger. On the other hand, I'm not sure this mistake would have been fixed had it not been brought to media's attention. Here's the burger. And that's exactly what you're pointing out. Four levels of escalation before someone was just not like, no, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie. It is true that... It sounds ISP, like Comcast. It is true that ISPs will mess around with this. Uh, a lot of ISPs are trying to only give you the, the minimum upload necessary not to... Like when your when your download and your upload ratio is so out of whack, you're using your upload a little bit to acknowledge all of the crap that you downloaded. So you have to have a little bit of upload. And ISPs are slowly trying to strangle more and more upload off of your stuff in the name of market segmentation. It's like, oh, you video stream, video conference a lot for work. You're gonna have to pay more. I think it was what like three or four hundred yeah. by twenty. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, it's really really crappy. Of course, ours is just as bad. Yeah, it really yeah. is. <clears throat> well, some of you out there are certainly the kind of hardware consumer who likes to look at your serial number. You might be looking for that uh, silicon lottery. You might be trying to figure out where it came from, when it was manufactured. There's a lot of little details in those serial numbers. I can't buy this laptop. It came from the Uyghur concentration camp. And Apple is saying that is far too much information for the consumer to have. <laughs> Apple is planning to switch to randomized serial numbers for the future products starting in early 2021. So, yeah, I, there's, I can't think of any reason for this that is not a terrible reason. 
Yeah, what is the advantage? Yeah. Like, a repair person can't look at, like, what genre and model it is. A lot of the time there were hints about your hardware configuration and the serial number, and now it's just random. And only Apple can look it up. I, not, not right now. That's not true right now. But that will be true in the future. Don't worry. Well, I'll tell you exactly what they're thinking about. They're thinking about someone popping a box off the shelf, looking at the serial number, punching it into their phone, and be like, oh, this one was after they started soldering the RAM. <laughs> This one's got the butterfly keyboard fix. Yeah. yeah. That kind of thing. That's what they're trying to avoid. Yeah. And uh, it is another in the many data points that teach us that Apple just doesn't like you being in control of things. <laughs> iOS 14.5 won't actually let you change a default music service. It may be easier to avoid Apple Music, but you kill, still can't set a new default. So this is something Apple is experimenting with because antitrust regulators were looking at it and saying... Well, I mean, you know, Chrome is available for Apple's operating system. Can you make that your default browser? And until recently, the answer was no. Poorly timed drink. So uh, <laughs> they uh, talked about something that I've already forgotten. Oh, yeah, yeah. The reason for this is because Siri. Siri has now has this, like, uh, she learns what you like in music. And remember, the patents... Siri's going to be looking, listening to the things around you. Remember the accents, the tone oh, of voice, yeah. the languages, what music like, is in your car already. She's using all that to profile your music to give you better music selections, right? <laughs> that's Apple's why. So evil is crazy. <laughs> so that's the reason they claim they can't give you a choice in that option. They have a great headline here. Now, there is a, a big uh, asterisk next to this 50%. <laughs> it's not compared to what you think it's compared to, but it is still impressive. Yep. Apple officially released, Apple, Adobe officially releases Photoshop for Apple's M1 arm and says it's 50% faster. Okay, it's faster than it was on the Apple M1, which would have been using the x86 no, no, emulation. No. It's faster than the old Intel. Yeah, yeah. The old model Intel. Not yeah. the emulation. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. So it's it's faster than an old computer. The well, previous model. I mean, that's still pretty good, though, because Intel hasn't really changed a lot in their processes. And 50% is a huge number. Yeah. you got to yeah. give them that. ARM is legit, like, coming to take x86's lunch. Because not only is it 50% faster, that's a fraction of the power usage. You I, lose uh, several features, but they didn't seem all that huge to me. It was mostly, like, sharing type stuff. The M1 so. core can really, really, like a single core or two cores, you know, can really chew up the memory bandwidth, which is which is nice for this kind of operations. Google has decided to change one of their products. and uh, Well, they're just uh, swapping it out. No one's sure why. I think I know why. <laughs> it has nothing to do with making it better. Also, I guess this is like an industrial toilet. Is that what I'm looking <laughs> at here? Could be. Uh, well, yeah, but they've they flushed some money down it. Do you see what they did there? Yeah, yeah. As, as well as the old Google Pay is also. Been yeah. Changed. The new Google Pay repeats all of the same mistakes of Google Allo for peer-to-peer -peer uses or just repeat. It's not really P2P, but okay. The new person app, to person. Person to person. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. It's not peer-to-peer -peer in the sense that like the data. It's yeah. just you sending money to another individual. The new app has fewer clients, is less convenient, and blah blah blah. Basically, like one of the fatal mistakes that this article points out, which is hilarious and stupid is that it assumes that you only have one phone. It's like, I would like to use Google Pay on more than one phone, and it's just like, no, I, no. Sorry, I can't do that. Yeah. And Like, not, how stupid is that? Not only that, but you used to be able to just send money to a number, and I think to an email address, kind of like PayPal. Now, uh, your recipient must also register and download the Google Pay app for that to work. And they did all this before, and it didn't work. So it's just like... Uh, Jerry, the the analytics here say that we need to do this, this, and this, and it's like, all right, let's let's build the app. But there isn't anybody sitting around at Google anymore that's saying it's like, what would actually be a good experience for human beings? Yeah, apparently, <clears throat> I don't do this, but apparently it's huge among the young people. Like when you're out, you know, having a good time, socializing, and someone's like, oh, let me grab the drinks, and you can just Venmo me, whatever later. 
So that's like a big part of the dynamic. That, I've the heard only, the young people say that, but I yeah. myself have not used it. The only reason that young the young people do that is because of the horrible misery that is trying to get the waitress or using the point of sale system to split a tab correctly. Oh, listen, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Start doing it in drive throughs <laughs> Multiple orders in drive throughs are not acceptable. Uh, Asus keeps releasing these juggernaut phones, and I love the idea of them. I don't know why. Because I don't wildly impractical. I don't awesome. play yeah. games on mobile at all, but this one even comes with a fan that you can install. <laughs> it's amazing. Asus is ROG Phone Five. You should definitely check that out. So I did actually look at the benchmarks for this, and it is a juggernaut. But it's crazy that there's it's like a sixty five watt hour battery in my <laughs> phone, so it's gonna last forever. You know, uh, we gotta run that fan. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Well, so if you want to play mobile games, I mean, that's your phone. But it's also a pretty good phone as far as phones go. It was interesting because the marketing guy, he was like, this is never going to break through because you're not in the 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 carriers. The carriers don't carry your phone, in the U.S. at least. And he said what he thought would have to happen, would there to be have to be a like an eSports phone league? <laughs> oh, yeah. And these guys would have to uh, sponsor that and use the phones – as the hardware but what do you think that could catch on yeah i definitely feel I that, think it, that could i think it might for a game like fortnite i mean fortnite's not like the big game anymore but I was, almost I've, everyone i knew played that on mobile i've always thought for a long time the convergence that was coming was that you would have a reasonably powerful phone that you could dock and it seems like uh the apple or the, like the apple m1 is finally a processor that could do that because in a phone it could just be in you know five watt mode but if you docked it and put a fan on it and gave it, you know, 35 watts or 65 watts or whatever, that could be a reasonable desktop computing experience. And if people could actually have a reasonable, like, laptop desktop computing experience plus the phone experience, yeah, that would take over the universe. People wouldn't carry laptops anymore. It would be kind of like a Switch, but, I mean, yeah. computer. But yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure if the mainstream world is as ready for that as you are. I, if if the user experience was good, the, the, just like tablets took over the world, that would happen. That's it, like how the iPad rose is how that would rise. So you say if the user experience is good, what operating system is that going to be? <sighs> yeah, we don't. It's not Android. It's not Windows. It's definitely not Linux. It's not iOS. It's not iOS. What was that, Krista? I was showing my iPad. Oh. Wait, I, I can't to see. To illustrate that. the point. Yeah, the iPad really did take over the universe. At this point, yeah. there are a lot of people that have abandoned their laptop in favor of an iPad with a keyboard, which seems crazy. <laughs> but for most rank and file, like office workers, I need email and some other stuff that actually does work reasonably well. The story was not sorted correctly. Oh, no. It's because of the A's. I saw the A's in Amazon and I oh. played myself. But we talked about the, uh, you know, the new apple stuff and the m1s and how they're taking over the world and guess what that means for the old one <laughs> the imac pro is being discontinued so this is basically the x299 chipset under the hood it was up to the intel 18 core uh these had a little bit of a heat problem just a little bit so apple is moving these to the new m1 uh or the new arm processors i should say it's going to be something a little beefier than the m1 when it comes out we'll probably see 32 gigs of ram out of the box and some other really awesome features like that so yeah, another, you know, uh, what is it? The uh, the funeral drums? I've forgotten the word for that. The f another funeral drum for x86. Dirge? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. There's like a, it's a Scottish thing. Play taps? <laughs> taps for x86. Yeah. Because of the iMac Pro. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, you can still get some of them until they are out completely. So if you run to the Apple Store, you can pick up that completely obsolete computer for just a tiny little amount of five thousand dollars. They were still selling the trash can Mac Pro from twenty thirteen for like five grand, like six months ago. Is that which is bananas? Is there like a dark version of Wendell somewhere who collects computers? He's like, I have to have it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like getting ready to order one right now. I bet there is the Apple version. Okay. Yeah, like, well, yeah, it's like Apple Wendell. That's like Bizarro Superman. <laughs> yeah. No, it's the not Bizarro Superman. Which one is the one that was like had the horribly messed up teeth because they brought him back to life too long? Too, he survived like the nuclear holocaust. And was that Dark Side Superman? Bizarro Superman was from the cartoon. Oh, okay. 
he was just stupid and evil. <laughs> Whereas Superman is smart and good. I mean, he was still strong, which is weird because wouldn't it be? You think? Yeah, I don't know. Well, one thing that I think, uh, if you had to think, would regular Superman or Bizarro Superman support this idea? <laughs> I think it's pretty clear. Amazon. It, even what? though uh, Lord Bezos kind of, you know, he's kind of a Luther type. <laughs> but he, I mean, he would definitely do this. Amazon withholds its ebooks from libraries because it would prefer that you pay instead. Amazon's publishing arm has refused to sell digital books to libraries. Now, what this article points out is the libraries already don't buy the regular version of books. They buy the very, very expensive designed to strangle libraries out of existence version of the books. This is straight up Amazon just doesn't want to sell you anything. And they are now the publisher and more and more they are bringing in like celebrities and stuff that's just on their publishing arm. And so if you want to read these people's books from libraries, you just can't. Is this one of the bullet points on the antitrust thing in U.S. antitrust law? What was that? I, I heard somebody. I heard somebody dog. bellow. You know what that is? She oh. was yawning. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, but it, here's the thing about it. I think the way to affect change here is at the author level. Yeah, because you can choose who your publisher is. Yeah, there are a lot of publishers. Well, to your point that are having really good luck self-publishing. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, then you might have to sell it on Amazon. But uh, <laughs> you, the, the celebrities they were pointing out, I didn't recognize any of the names. I don't know, let's see if we can find it here. Mindy Kaling, Trevor Noah. Yeah. Trevor Noah's the one guy that did the Today Show, right? He's still doing, yeah. the, or he's still doing the Daily Show. Oh, Mindy Kaling's in the office. So I won't care about any of those people, but I imagine somebody does. And then you could tweet to Trevor Noah right now and say, hey, Trevor Noah, why did you betray us? <laughs> then realize you made a typo and have to hit the undo button. <laughs> Amazon has uh, not been sitting on its laurels as it was going through the pandemic, making billions and billions of dollars. It's been rotating that money into destroying the workforce. <laughs> Amazon expands its palm recognition payment tech to more of its stores. Soon it'll be available in 12 of its locations. So you just wave your palm over the thing, it takes a picture, and then it knows who you are. Here is the question, and if they haven't already thought of it, I'm going to give you an easy idea here. I hate to do it, but it's such a good idea, I have to give it to you. Disney Star Wars marketing tie-in. <laughs> this this is, probably already happened. Exactly. This is not the bagels you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Uber and Lyft do not get along. <laughs> they've sued each other several times, and they've said bad things about each other's software and drivers. But when a situation is so bad that it brings two opposite sides together... You know it's a problem. Lyft and Uber create a shared database of drivers banned for assault. The program will be open to other transportation and delivery companies as well. It will surely never be used for abuse or trolling. Or, based on, I don't know, political beliefs? <laughs> what if they found out you were at a certain place in January? He had a fish, fish bumper sticker. Ah... I do cut those people off. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying that they had to make a list at all. I think that was, I mean, we knew that was coming, right? Yeah. I mean, when they announced Uber, if you thought it through at all, you were like, oh. <laughs> it's like, oh, a new opportunity for predators. Yeah. 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 Uh, but Tesla is another company that's not been sitting back and waiting. They are looking to get involved. And this one, I guess this is the whole, like, never let a crisis go to waste, right? Yeah. But unlike the government, I don't know if we can argue against this one. I think it actually will improve things. Tesla is plugging a secret mega battery into the Texas grid because the Texas grid still ain't right. Two weeks later, the utility scale battery is located outside of Houston and will connect to the same grid that, that uh, messed up in February. I think they mentioned... If you were to measure in the heat of summer, oh, Bloomberg is not going to let us read the whole article. But if you were to measure in the heat of the Texas summer, this thing could keep 22,000 homes going. Was, uh, was, do we have the story? Is this the next story the one about, um, Samsung? Samsung and their fab still working on coming to Texas? We don't have that story at all. Oh, okay. Samsung is still like the, I was thinking about that while, when I read this story. 
um, because I'd read that story earlier in the week. But Samsung is still thinking about bringing their fab to Texas, and Texas, I, I, it's not in the news. But I guarantee, if there's, you know, Kyle Wiggers or one of you guys that actually no, do we a did good it job, last week, did we? That's the, the Biden thing. Yeah, but the the part that I'm talking about is like one of the things that I'm sure that they're talking about is the grid is so terrible in Texas. I don't think there've been any stories about that part of it. This yeah, would go a long way to helping that. I don't think it's the grid, it's the business model. Well, I think it, I think it is partially the grid though because Texas refuses to tie into any other state's grid, which is how every other because, state operates because of their business model. The like, grid is the way that it is because yeah. of the business model. That's right. true. I imagine I it'll, I'm sure it'll take a long time, but I imagine that will change. Plus if you're uh, Samsung or whoever, yeah, you're just going to do this on your own. As of yesterday, Samsung's fab that they have there now is still offline two weeks later because the damage was that extensive. Just like not having power for a little while really messes up a fab. It messes up everything. Yeah. The modern world. I don't think it was just exist. for a little while too. A lot of yeah. people were out for like a week at least. Yeah. Well, Mr. Musk might be killing it in terms of uh, municipal energy, but when it comes to his car company every single day brings another competitor <laughs> we have the honda that's going to be level three he ain't got no level three and now we have this <laughs> automotive startup canoe debuts a snub-nosed electric pickup and there's a picture here and you just you have to look at the picture it's so cute but i oh, found myself really uh fascinated by like are the trees at an angle did they change the angle of the photo is this truck going downhill <laughs> they look pretty straight uh. is that a solar panel on top of it I don't know what that is. Might be a bike rack. rack. It looks pretty beefy for a bike rack. Yeah. So this thing is really powerful. I think it's like, yeah, 600 horsepower and 550 pound feet of torque. It has a frunk. And a 200 mile range, which is pretty good. One or two motor as well. But uh, set to go into production 2023. That's actually not that far away. But it still has plenty of time to become a... Uh, What's the name of that company? <laughs> Nicola. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, GM what you, is going to swoop in and be like, hey, we need that. <laughs> Do what, Krista? The the name, Canoe. There's yeah, already name. a mode of transport named a Canoe. Yeah, but they spelled it C-A-N-O-O. -O. <laughs> that, is, that is just peak <laughs> startup company. <laughs> you think somebody's going to buy one and just drive it right into a lake? It's like, what? <laughs> I thought it was amphibious. I'm confused. How would you call it that? Bitcoin. Did you look at the price today? No, I didn't. I think it hit another record, right? Did it? Over oh, the week? let's look. Oh, yeah, it exploded. Wow. It's definitely in the high 50s right now, I think. 57. There you go. Wow. So, and that drags in the big players. They see those numbers <laughs> and they think, oh, we have to get in. We hate it, but there's money to be made. But here's the thing about it. Cryptocurrency, like you got when you're dealing with us dollars if fraud takes place you have some recourse maybe not the best but somehow you can try to claw back that money on the blockchain <laughs> nope. nope so what do you do if you're a big company and you're putting hundreds of millions of dollars into cryptocurrency how do you secure it P paypal is going to acquire cryptocurrency security startup curve because paypal is getting into this now so they are a uh, curve if you're thinking, oh, I need to use Curve. No, Curve doesn't work for you. Curve works for giant wallets like PayPal is going to have to have. So when PayPal is flushing out all these transactions, they need a big bank of Bitcoin to tap against. They can't be going to the market every time. And that big bank of Bitcoin, they got to figure out how to protect it. And I guess that's what Curve is going to do. We should build some sort of mechanical cryptocurrency wallet thing where like, you have to crank a handle the more Bitcoin that you spend. That would be an excellent physical security thing. What about those old uh, armature controlled tape servers? Oh, yeah. Where it just like it gets your cold wallet and plugs it in when you need it. Yeah, we could do that. I've got some old uh, auto loaders for uh, DDS <laughs> tapes. <laughs> that would be amazing. Store the Bitcoin wallets like one coin per DDS tape. You, you've only got the one USB and the <laughs> arm gets it and just crushes it. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Well, Krista, you have officially given up on your dreams by buying that house. You will never be a van lifer. I will never be a van lifer. No, 
Unless, you know, there's a horrible collapse and then, you know, everyone has to be nomadic. I don't know. She could design a really amazing t-shirt that we sell a million of and then, you know, have the vacation RV. The vacation RV. Yeah, can't, that can't. would be an option. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess if you wanted to go that way. And if you do, there is some good news because there's now an option that you've never had before. Well, actually not now, but soon. Trademark. Very soon. SpaceX plans Starlink broadband for trucks, ships, and planes. So it did say cars. And Elon Musk is like, cars, that's crazy. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's apparently, it's, it's, it's only too big. Truck. Yeah. yeah. So, uh. But he sees this uh, as being used for RVs. And he said it's going to be the same electronics as the regular, or the same innards, I guess, as the regular one, except maybe some auto-pointing stuff to automatically point it the right way. But he also said that the multi-array setup, you're not going to outrun it. Yeah. Especially not an RV. I mean, how, what's the, how fast are you driving an RV? <laughs> not fast enough. So uh, that's, that's going to be a cool thing. Uh, that is expensive to run a hundred dollars a month and something that you might drive every other month. I mean, some people are buying half million dollar RVs. So RVs that, are very pricey if you've ever yeah. looked at those prices. The RV market is weird because, like, one company manufactures kind of a base RV, and then another company goes and buys it and pimps it, and then they sell yeah. it to you, just like a house. I guess there's some. <laughs> there's a lot of comparisons there, aren't there? Yeah. <laughs> I uh here so well I'll wait till after we do the story but I've learned another trick in looking at online reviews and I've been looking at a lot of online reviews to get stuff fixed after the ice storm and I've noticed this <laughs> UK businesses caught buying five star Google reviews what's the secret the secret is if they use the first name of the business owner in the review they got that from when they were hired and that's something they do to make it more personal but like images on Amazon it actually is a red flag. Mm. Yeah. It is kind of weird when they mention someone by name. It's like, did the owner like talk to you about your issue? Why are you talking about them? Yeah, apparently that is very common for the fake reviewers. I'm not sure why. I guess they're trying to just think of something to say, right? Because it's fake. You got to yeah. try to say something. <laughs> so watch just out trying for that. to pad that word count. <laughs> yeah, probably. It's probably that simple. I hired Bob's repair. He did the needful. Thank you. <laughs> Robert did an excellent job. <laughs> he uses his full name. The movie companies are not having a good time. Things are bad for them, but they continue to innovate in the most important ways. <laughs> They're definitely focusing on the problem here. MGM's iconic roaring movie icon has been replaced by an all-CG logo. You can go watch this. This was big news in Ad Age and a lot of other ad agencies are like all, uh, you know, looking at stuff and whatever. I think they got the existential dread in the lion, but it's just, it's just not doing it for me. <laughs> Still a little uncanny valley. What? It's like when he turns his head, there's just some sort of like weird thing like a weird fade between two angles that it doesn't feel quite right but here's the thing and uh, you know whoever reported this this was uh cnet they didn't point this out and i feel like this is a huge oversight if you're the reporter for this story a company that's bleeding money hemorrhaging money what, what you would say <laughs> spent how much <laughs> on listen, a cg lion listen that ad agency contract money was in place before the global situation and it had to be spent on something I suppose the CG guys are not making any movies right now, are they? <laughs> yeah. But you know who is making movies and making a lot of money doing it? They have definitely adapted is the evil empire of Disney. Disney Plus tops 100 million subscribers worldwide, eclipsing pretty much everybody's estimates of their success, including mine. This is uh, impressive given the very high cost and relatively low value that Disney plus brings you i mean i kind of get it if you got kids because you could just turn your kids loose with it and then you don't have to deal with your children but uh. but most downloaded tv show in 2020 do you know what it was mandalorian mandalorian they got the number one show it's it it pandered the mandalorian successfully pandered to the fan base in all of the ways the star trek discovery attempted to pander to the fan base and failed catastrophically although i have seen rumors that this success has changed their mind. They're no longer getting rid of Kathleen Kennedy. We're getting <laughs> three more Ray movies. Wow. And Mandalorian might even go away. <laughs> Neat. So look forward to that. I so resent Disney's presence everywhere on the internet. 
that I would never consider getting a Disney Plus subscription. Yeah. Because it's all everyone it. talks about is like The Mandalorian or did you watch this other thing that Disney released? And I'm like, no, no, I didn't. Don't forget all those authors that uh, they bought the rights to all the Star Wars books. You know, when Disney took over, they still haven't paid the authors. How Well, they retconned all that. <laughs> That no, doesn't like, this isn't real. Anymore. You're not allowed to sell your book, and also we're not paying you the royalties we owe you. But how about this, Chris? To think about this, because you didn't consider this. Once sports come roaring back, the starved people are going to explode onto ESPN Plus, and that's just going to be more money for them. <laughs> I would like to see a uh, you know uh, reality show bounty hunting in space on ESPN Eight. Yeah. <laughs> Although, who are you looking for in space? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Isn't it always Matt Damon? <laughs> That's always the plot. Well, we will talk about some moon colonies later on. Actually, it's probably not in this episode, right? Oh, that's that was. I can't remember if that was nonsense or not. Yeah. Well, so here's a here's a headline that kind of sounds like nonsense, but it's real. <laughs> it's a feature on Stadia that people like. Yeah. Mm. Stadia lets you play people's screenshots, and it feels kind of like the future. So. I saw this headline and I was skeptical and I read the article and I was like, I don't, I don't see it. So I sought more information out about this and played with it a little bit. And it is actually, it is actually kind of fun. Save states. Now I will say in 1996, we were swapping uh, nesticle save states. <laughs> yeah. It's Remember like you that? Did, yeah. It's like you get, you got all the stuff in Final Fantasy 2. You got both of the ninja swords. It's like, yeah, it's, all right, here's my save state. That's the only time I've ever gotten to Mike Tyson. <laughs> So uh, it's not new, but it is very impressive that they're doing it with modern games. Yeah. And you can sort of like tweet a screenshot, and then I, as a Stadia user, can just click and enter your screenshot. Start playing the game. That is one of the most annoying things. In modern games like Cyberpunk or even like The Witcher, or like you start the game, and it's like a 10-minute ordeal to deal with oh, all of the nonsense. Flash screens. Yeah, but this was just like click, good to go. And yeah. that's not a Stadia thing. Like, we can have that quality of life without Stadia. Yeah. I mean, Stadia, that whatever file that they're moving around could just be stored. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> this is an interesting story. Uh, in Sweden, apparently, you can get so rural, even with decent-sized towns, that there are no stores. Now, I think what's going on here, Krista, this is uh, what you were talking about uh, a couple of weeks ago. I think this is sort of like a company town. Yeah. And oh, so yeah. everybody here is here for the same reason. And the company kind of runs this, which makes it a little more dystopian, but still pretty yeah. cool. Shops return to rural Sweden, but are now staff free. So it's a shop. You walk in, you buy what you need, you pay for it, and it's just you. Look how happy this guy is. I Looks mean, like that, he just got out of bed. That sounds kind of nice, in all honesty. I mean, this Imagine is what, not having a Dollar General, though. This yeah. is what Amazon's going to bring us. The Amazon Dollar General. You just wave your palm and you get whatever you need. Where do these people buy fuel? Probably also an attendantless installation. Mm. Gas station somewhere, yeah. Gas station, Dollar General. Do you need anything else? I mean, there was one time that I stopped at the, the, the BP that's on the way back to where we grew up. And there was no one in there. Like I went in to get some stuff because I wanted, you know, a snack, and I paid for my gas at the pump. And then I went inside, and there was nobody there for like ten minutes. And then they finally came out, and they were like, "Oh, sorry, I was in the bathroom." There, I can't tell you how many times I've done that at the Dollar General. Yeah, because happens staff, a lot. They max two. Yeah, max two employees, and sometimes one of them's not there. Yeah, and you'll wander around the store, and nobody is there. Yeah, that's like a pocket dimension when it's like late at night, and you go in, and there's no one there. It's weird. <laughs> This headline was amazing, but unfortunately, <laughs> Tech Radar, they Tech Radar didn't handle the update very well. No, they did it's not. It's still not obvious what happened here. Yeah. But don't get your hopes up. Crypto miners have already cracked Nvidia's RTX 3060 hash rate limiter. <laughs> Engagement challenge, get your re out of your system now. The headline is not accurate. So Octopus, which I'd not heard of before, have you? It's another cryptocurrency, one of the newer ones, I guess. Uh, what they were actually doing was mining Octopus. Now, Octopus's algorithm is not in the firmware. So it's not surprising. You could still get around that. Of course, an update could change all that. But is this really like the cryptocurrency limited in software thing is just so dumb. But they showed so it. So dumb. The screenshot showed Ethereum. 
that was not real. It's not. It's yeah. It's not real. Well, supposedly it's not real. No one could reproduce it. Now, Chrissy, you used to be one of these horrible, horrible people, but now moved into your new home and cohabitating. I think you have uh, got a pass. You've you've changed your ways. Are you still using this for your extended family, though? Uh, you know, I would never ever do such a thing with Netflix. And I definitely am not still using my brother-in-law's account. Well, so. guess what? Those days might be over. How do you like the idea of drinking a verification can <laughs> while you're hoard- or, uh, binging all of your favorite videos? Because that's kind of what's coming here. Mountain Dew does it right. Netflix tests cracking down on password sharing. You get a pop-up and it's like, we're going to send you a text message. Is that okay? And you can be like, mm, not right now. And if you can't get that text message, they're going to give you an option and no one knows exactly how long this lasts or how often you can get it, but they're going to be like, oh, ask me later. And then that cues you up so that when that timer runs out, ever how long it is, you have to re-authenticate or you're just locked out of your account. Neat. That is kind of, that is just drink verification can. It is really. I mean, you don't have to buy anything yet, but uh, those days are coming. You think they'll ever offer like a, an extra fee on the account for like the express account. I thought they had a family account, but maybe not. Yeah, but I'm you saying, can do multiple profiles. So like, that's how we do it currently. But I think the Rude. family that's going to be probably limited by individual IP addresses, right? You could still go afoul of that. Yeah. I did say that everybody has to be in the same household in the pop-up that I saw. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. The other thing about watching TV that's becoming more and more unbearable is the same as with our phones. The bloat. Oh, so much bloat. TLDR, I guess I have to watch ads everywhere on my $1,500 LG TV now. TV makers are leaving no stone or ad spot unturned. So it's like, I paid for this TV. I'm getting an ad on my TV. Why am I getting an ad on my TV? Oh, it's because I connected my TV to the network. And I can't trust my TV to be a TV. It wants to be a smart device. This, this is why companies are building smart TVs. Not to build something that's better or more convenient, but to milk more money out of you. That was during an update, that little screenshot you saw there. This is the the bottom corner during an update. And here is the kicker, full volume. You can't control it. Oh, I hate that. Yeah. That's like, have you noticed a lot of gas stations have put in screens? So like you go to get gas and it blares an ad at you. It is so obnoxious. And sometimes there's a mute button and the paint is always worn off the mute button. (laughs) Yeah. Because nobody wants that. Again, the same way that I resent Disney for being everywhere. That's how I feel about ads anymore. Yeah. Like they're just everywhere. It's so (laughs) pervasive and I just don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I wouldn't watch them unless I'm on a quality YouTube channel. Not only are these ads ineffective, the people that are selling them are borderline hucksters. Yeah. Uh, Well, that's not ripping us off. That's ripping off LG. (laughs) Yeah. Or actually, I guess that's LG ripping off Ace Hardware because that's what the ad was. (laughs) Ace Hardware, what are you thinking? Like, I need Ace Hardware to stick around. Ace Hardware is an amazing beacon of like american entrepreneurship i need ace hardware to not go out of business and this is not giving me hope that ace hardware is being run in a way that makes sense you know i went to ace hardware uh this week and they are wiped out of furnace filters yeah because everywhere else only carries garbage tier furnace filters and they had some good stuff i buy their garbage tier filters it's like five dollars well their garbage tier filters are better than the garbage like it's even more yeah but where do you go now? Ace Hardware was the only, <laughs> and I, like, getting a, where do you get a 24 by 24? Jeff Bezos. I think you get this at Lowe's. <laughs> you have to buy like 20 at a time. Now, the yeah. ones from Lowe's are a little bit of a trap. They've got a, they've got a couple that are way overpriced, and then they've got a couple that are just, you might as well just not use a filter. I've, I've not you might always, as well just put a cotton cloth in your, in your furnace. Yeah. I've not always found the sizes I want at Lowe's. Yeah, yeah, it's just random. Yeah. Well, the other thing about retail that shocked me and it wasn't this week, but it's been 2021. I've noticed this. When I was checking out, I was at, you know, like the the gift card station. And I was just looking through them because I was waiting. And I was like, Roblox? <laughs> Roblox gift cards? Roblox is popular enough that they sell gift cards at Kroger? Are the normies really that into Roblox? 
Well, how ignorant I was. <laughs> Putting Roblox's incredible $45 billion IPO in context. Wednesday stock offering values created a user created game platform uh, valued higher than electronic arts. Well, I don't necessarily disagree with that. I mean, electronic arts is not, uh, so, not the best, but this does seem like a little bit of an excess valuation. Uh, what was GameStop worth again? Revenue. This is revenue. This is not stock manipulation. They made $923 million in 2020. <laughs> 2018 was only $312 million, so they've uh, And 2019 was 400 So certainly people being trapped at home. Good yeah. for the Roblox company. <laughs> but still, that is incredible. Do you understand the monetization scheme of Roblox? I have no clue. I think you pay a full price game, right? And then you pay more. Yeah, we had some of our fans send us Roblox. I just couldn't get into it. Really? Yeah. We played Roblox? On stream. I don't remember playing Roblox. We, we never did. played we, Roblox. We definitely did. Absolutely not. Pretty I sure. don't think we did. Zero straws. Let us know. <laughs> Engagement challenge. But, uh, yeah. 37.1 daily users. <laughs> What's the Counter-Strike daily count right now? <laughs> I don't think it's that much. Or the WoW daily count. Oh, no. WoW would peak to like 70 million. But they stopped reporting it. They were yeah. so... Ashamed of it. It was like 70 million to like 700,000. That was worldwide too, so. Yeah, I don't know what Roblox has, but I feel like I'm missing out now. I think it's geared toward kids, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Huh. Huh. All right, what do we got for tomorrow? Nonsense. Uh, Is it just nonsense? Oh, it's government. We didn't have government. Government and nonsense. Oh, yeah. There wasn't really a lot of government news this week. Yeah, that's why it's delegated to Friday. Business news and news of new processors are what dominated. All right, see you Friday.